Evelyn Hart can hold an audience in awe. The prima ballerina has been with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet for almost three decades. Still, on stage, all she projects is lyrical grace. This is the last time the Canadian icon will perform with the company, but no one knows they're witnessing her swan song. The hardest thing is to be made to feel that somehow I have overstayed my welcome. How I would summarize my relationship with RWB right now is I can only say that I'm hoping that one day I'll feel comfortable walking back in the building. It's May, last year. Rehearsals for the closing show of the 2003-2004 season are underway. Although she has had fewer roles as of late, publicly Hart is still considered the company's principal dancer. Once again, she plays the doomed lover in Romeo and Juliet, a role she's been cast in eight times in her 29-year career. She's a 48-year-old prima ballerina dancing the role of a 13-year-old girl. Her partner, Jason Riley, is half her age. He's been very, very, very polite and not mentioning that I'm old enough to be his mother. <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm 24 when I'm with him. But time won't be denied. The ballet legend is struggling to show people she's still on her game. Max Wyman is a dance critic and the author of Evelyn Hart's 1991 biography. Yes, she's, she's in her late 40s, but she's matured into this wonderfully expressive, wise artist who can still summon the simplicity of a 14-year-old and make you believe in it. When Evelyn's on the stage, you don't look at anyone else. But for some time now, Hart has not been cast in any of the company's highly promoted productions. The ballet has also stopped using her in its publicity campaigns. Signs, her career with the RWB is winding down. How has your life changed as a dancer in the last couple of years? The moments on stage have gotten um, more deep and more important and more resonant. The road to get there has become, some at moments, intolerable. Ballet wasn't a part of young Evelyn's life. Then, at the age of 10, she saw Veronica Tennant dance across her television screen in Romeo and Juliet. When I met dance, it was, that was like, bam. I mean, it was like, whop. And there was just, it just consumed everything in me. It was like, it was like striking a match and lighting it to a, a, a bundle of paper and it just went, Evelyn began her training in London, Ontario at the age of 14. After a brief stint at the National Ballet School, she moved to Winnipeg in 1973 to be a student at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet School. Three years later, she joined the professional division and quickly moved through the ranks to become a principal dancer. Arnold Spohr was artistic director and Evelyn's mentor. When Evelyn came, I thought that girl will be it. It didn't take long for Evelyn to make her mark. In 1980, she became the first Canadian to win a gold medal in a prestigious ballet competition in Varna, Bulgaria. It put both Evelyn Hart and the Royal Winnipeg Ballet in the international spotlight. We finally had a ballerina that is world renowned. The company shifted focus to accommodate Evelyn's talent, changing its repertoire to include the classics she needed to grow as a ballerina. In turn, her performances in Giselle, Romeo and Juliet and Swan Lake brought the RWB standing ovations and won the dancer everything from a star on Canada's Walk of Fame to the Order of Canada. But there's been a price to pay for success. So how would you describe your life outside of dance? Boring. <laughs> really boring. <laughs> The life of a prima ballerina has meant more than a few sacrifices for Evelyn. A typical night at home revolves around emailing her legion of friends and working on point shoes. She's never learned how to drive a car. Her love life has had to take a back seat. And in her early years of dance, 
she developed an eating disorder known as anorexia. She decided to make her personal struggle public in Max Wyman's book, but those words set off whispers that have plagued Hart throughout her entire career. First of all, I think you have to know that probably almost 90% of dan all dancers have a, a certain time period in their life where they're having to uh, deal with a certain kind of issue like that. It's also partly, unfortunately, part of the aesthetic from my point of, of, a, of an artist is that I prefer to see a leaner body. How much do you have to struggle with eating disorder now? At this point I'd say that it's really basically sort of in check. It's been really even for a long, long time. Have the sacrifices been worth it? Oh yeah, like hundredfold. Look at those tutus. Wouldn't you do anything to wear those, those tutus? You see, it's all about the jewels. And mm -hmm. feeling, feeling beautiful. That's what really it was when I was a kid. And now it's much more about understanding the beauty of the spirit and being able to share that. But these days, there are fewer opportunities to feel that passion. Over the last couple of years, Evelyn has watched from the sidelines as the company has mounted more and more productions without her. I have no visibility and there is nothing. It's really basically, they're being kind enough to sort of allow me to finish my career but there's been no planning, there's been no effort to continue my growth as an artist. And just be careful because it, it came out a little bit... Andre Lewis is the artistic director and, and a former like dance partner of Hearts. Why has she not been dancing over this last year? Well, I, I mean, without getting into detail, sometimes there were differences between her and the choreographer, perhaps. But I mean, she Lewis says the issue of retirement has been on and off the table for the last five years, but Hart refused to give a final exit date, making it difficult to cast her. But certainly we have tried to do is essentially support her well within what she felt she could do and we felt we could offer her. Hart turns 49 next week, and although the ballet denies it, she believes her age has a lot to do with being sidelined. Has her dancing declined, though? Oh, you know, it's... You, you can't answer it that way as, as someone decline in that sense. I mean... Uh, no, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it in, in those terms. That thought in your head, have I, have I somehow let the art form down? <laughs> and that would be the hardest thing, ultimately, is to feel that somehow I've let the art form down. And I don't think I have. But Evelyn's not sure if the fight to stay is worth it. By mid-season, she's weighing retirement options. Walking away won't be easy. Shopping becomes an antidote for low spirits and sleepless nights. She's a regular at this upscale discount outlet. Isn't that cute? With all the little buttons and the little, the little thingies. Mm. This might have to be my, my little gift to myself at some point when I'm feeling really depressed. The shopping trip is very much about fantasy. Evelyn can't afford most of what she sees. And it's down to 2000 Ending her dance career will also affect Hart's bank account. She's obtained a lawyer to see if she can negotiate a severance package. She has bills to pay. Recently, Evelyn has spent an increasing amount of money on her foot injury and skin treatments to recapture her youth. She feels she needs these things so she can keep performing. Those are only $9. Like, how can you resist? She may be a Canadian icon, but the RWB still only pays Hart an average middle-class salary. So it's not a rich company, and it was an agreement way back that in order to maintain the status quo for the company, that my salary would remain, but what, what would be given me would be time to go away and sort of do another job to try to augment my salary. So uh, there's a fair fair financial concern. <laughs> But financial instability at the end of a dance career is not a new problem. For much of the 20th century, a dance till you drop mentality prevailed. But in the mid-1970s, former dancers who struggled through their own transitions fought for change. And today, four major career transition centers exist around the globe, like this one in Toronto. The Dancer Transition Resource Centre offers everything from financial help to one-on-one -on -one counselling for dancers. Joyzanne Sedimus is Executive Director. 
She's also an ex-dancer. Sedimus dealt with her exit from the stage by writing a book about the transition of others. I found that 15 of the men that I had worked with had committed suicide and that there were nervous breakdowns. There was drug addiction, alcoholism. Sedima says she started the center because some dancers were not properly equipped to deal with life after the stage. We've been fueled by passion. Passion is what informs your choices. And um, they, they have a hard time believing that there's anything else that will take that, really take the place of that. Evelyn doesn't really know what she wants to do next. Her direction changes daily. She could freelance as a dancer, but she's also suggested becoming an interior designer or opening a cookie shop. That's where the panic comes, is to know, how do I find something that will allow my soul to be express, expressive? Because otherwise, then I, I would feel like I was dead. Oh. Is that funny? Is that weird? <laughs> it's December, and Hart is feeding her soul by dancing benefits with former dance partner and friend Rex Harrington. Oh, sorry. Shit. Okay. Sorry, sorry. But she's come to the realization that she needs more than just friends to help her through this transition. She's asked Jos Pelt to act as her manager. I find it very upsetting that, that this, somebody who's been with the company for 30 years uh, you know, that we treat artists this way in, in our country. Uh, that, that she will walk away after her last performance uh, and there will be no pension and there will be no golden handshake. Uh, the last paycheck, uh, that's it. Then, then she's out on her own. And that's pretty sad when you think of what she's done for this company and for this country. No, she's actually in a great movie. It's March and Evelyn has made her decision. She's put a plan in place to leave Winnipeg and the ballet company behind without a word to anyone. I know it's going to be smaller because I'm moving downtown Toronto and, you know, it's four times more expensive than Winnipeg. Hart has sold her Winnipeg home and spent her life savings on a condo in Toronto. So you're wedged between two feet. Yeah, yes, yes. And this no one in Winnipeg knows she plans to move in April before the dance season ends. Honestly, with the situation with Winnipeg, I just feel that I need to make a clean break in order to find out where I could go. What do you hope that this city will have to offer you? You know, I have no idea. It's just that you, first of all, well, the main thing is basically that I know that I've got support system here. I have the Dancer Transition Center, I have friends, I have a lot of people who respect me and are wanting the best for me. This trip has given Hart time to focus on the future. She's gotten herself an agent and is looking into acting lessons. And most importantly, she's formulated a plan for her final RWB performance. Still in Toronto, Evelyn is welcomed at the National Ballet. Here she can maintain her form. And today, she's starting to prepare for her final bow. She's going to perform her farewell dance without telling the company or the audience what they're witnessing. Got little bits of Giselle and Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty. She shares her secret with friend and ballet teacher Lindsay Fisher. When I opened a purse and I threw rose petals and I thought, it's perfect, I'll go out laughing. Yeah, yeah. Back in Winnipeg, the company still knows nothing of Evelyn's plans. It's just announced its next show, Rodeo. Hart is only scheduled to dance a six-minute pas de deux. It's the only piece she will dance the entire season. She's asked the RWB to add a comedy number to the program, but she won't tell them why. <laughs> <It's my footstep. laughs> I really think that when I step on stage for the last time, that should be my private moment. And I think I've earned that. Not to be in the spotlight. Evelyn has asked ballet master Philip Beamish to coach her for her last role. Like, like turn and leave it there, leave it there, leave it, stretch it out, stretch it out, and then drop it. But there may be a problem. She had surgery to correct an old foot injury earlier in the season, and it doesn't feel quite right. Everything else in my body is really in great functioning order, but it's just that without your foot, you can't really do what you need to do. But I thought you were going to do PT. I was, I forgot. <laughs> 
two weeks before the final performance, and Evelyn is back in Winnipeg. The company has agreed to add Hart's spoof to the show, but her colleagues are still completely unaware of what she's up to, rehearsing for her final goodbye. As I started to get nervous the other day, thinking, what happens if I'm not funny? <laughs> There's nothing worse than that, right? If I go out and everybody takes me seriously. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Evelyn gets some badly needed moral support when old friend and mentor Arnold Spohr drops by. Yes, I need that. Come on. It seems only fitting that the person who started her RWB career is unwittingly here to witness the end of it. Uh -huh. After practicing for a couple of days, Hart is still deciding if the foot is ready for the stage. I worked on it, um, and it didn't get worse. It actually got better. I thought, maybe I've got a chance, so I'm going to try. She seems to have made up her mind to go through with the performance on the spot. The pain of performing on an injured foot doesn't even come close to the pain of not dancing at all. It's the morning of the final show. Evelyn has been here since 8 a.m. for a 2 o'clock matinee. Just like every performance throughout her career, she's the first dancer to arrive. But this is not just any morning. It's her last backstage warm-up, and no one else knows it. Evelyn, just tell me how you're feeling right now. Um, just a bit panicked as to whether or not my legs are going to make it through the show. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are really tired. Board all 22, it's your left. Yeah. First bow. The audience arrives for the show. There's no mention of Hart's comedy in the program. It's been added to the show so late, Andre Lewis must make an impromptu announcement. After this, we have an addition in your program. It's not written in your program. It's called Le Grand Pas de Deux, which will feature Evelyn Hart again and Robert Tuesday. <laughs> And as Evelyn Hart begins to dance, only she knows that her 29-year career with the RWB is coming to an end. Will you have fond memories of your career at the RWB? Oh yeah, it's been my home. And already making the decision to move on makes me grow fonder. There's no way that that's not going to be the most important relationship of my entire life. Behind the scenes, the details of her retirement, financial and otherwise, have yet to be finalized. But on stage, she still managed to go out on her own terms. I wanted to leave laughing. I, want, I wanted Winnipeg to leave on a, uh, on a happy note. As for what Evelyn Hart deserves, after a lifetime of putting herself second to her art form, she's decided to put the woman first. That chapter of her life has yet to be written. You know, there's moments that I'm terribly excited about it, and I have really very little idea of what it's going to look like. But the only thing that I dream is that it will involve ball gowns. <laughs> As long as I have chocolate and ball gowns in my life, I'll be fine. <laughs> For The National, I'm Barbara Brunzel in Winnipeg.